Today, we are here to talk about technology and video games. We are here discussing how, over years and time, technology has evolved and changed society, and we are going to specifically look at how video games played a role in this. Video games were first created in 1958 by William Higginbotham. The first game he created were two electronic paddles that were hitting a small little dot back and forth, which we recognize these days as a game called Pong. You could have played it when you were younger on the Atari system back in the day. After that first game, many other people decided to try and create their own video games, and they continued to rise in popularity, leading to now having arcade rooms where many people could go and play all the video games together, also to leading to other home consoles. The most advanced currently on the market today is called the PlayStation 4, which is the one on the bottom right-hand picture. Immediately, society greatly responded to how video games were, and they took off just immediately. Many people were wanting to play them more and more. Um, first, it was just one player playing. Then others be able, were able to play cooperatively, where that's why the home consoles were built, is so families could have a family time playing the video games at home. As technology in, got better... People would, uh, the graphics got better on the video games, leading to instead of just two little paddles, then you had what is called 8 bit graphics. And then leading up to today, where the, the pictures you see on the screen are fully rendered, I mean, very lifelike, very detail oriented, you can count sometimes the strands of hair on a person's head. The, the video games are so graphic. Such, or also, one of my favorite personal things is. When a character jumps into a water, it makes the ripples and waves that a, a puddle would create when when the character is inside it. Also, one of the neatest things is as technology has grown, you went from playing a video game only with exclusively either the game itself or playing with a person sitting next to you. The internet then came around, and you can actually now play living it in your home town say of houston texas playing against someone at the same time living in china or anywhere in the world without ever seeing each other face to face advertising for video games is usually geared for teenage males this is how it's always been even though video games are actually a very universal uh, product male female young and old there's video games for them all um, such as, I mean, kid games that can help teach them, you know, their alphabet, teach them their numbers, teach them basic arithmetic, or also just uh, more cartoonish style games playing such as Lego, where, I mean, there is no consequences for winning or losing in the game. You just collect the Lego blocks. Then you have the more graphic games such as Mortal Kombat or Call of Duty that are the very, can be very violent games. Uh, very uh, graphic and mature, for mature audiences only. These are the ones geared mainly for the males, and even though anyone is still able to play and enjoy them. Due to the graphic content of the games, parents started becoming outraged and would start complaining. This is one of the biggest problems and consequences of technology um, in the video games. Games got more violent, more graphic, and so someone had to step in and they created the MSRB system, which gave a rating for video games. So when you went to the store, you under the parents understood what they were buying. It listed below are the different categories in which a game could fall, whether it be childhood, everyone, everyone ten and up, teenager, all the way up to mature. You know, and below those ratings, it would tell you why the game was rated that way. Maybe it was graphic or sexually explicit. Um, just, and it was up to then the parents on whether or not they would still buy these games for kids. They could no longer truly blame 
them for what they saw on the on the in, inside the video game. Another common complaint is the price of video games. You know, as time and technology has gone on, the price for to buy a game itself has gotten more and more expensive. In today's market, you would generally pay fifty nine ninety nine for one game, and that's not including the home console in which you play it. That generally is about three hundred and fifty dollars that you have to spend all at once for that game system. The last complaint is parents complain that children no longer go outside and aren't socially interactive um, with kids in a more um, different environment. They're just stuck in front of a TV playing video games all day. But in my opinion, all of these complaints truly falls also on the parents to step in and tell them either they cannot buy the video game due to the graphic content or also... Um, that they need to turn the system off and go outside and just go play like normal. For this presentation, that is currently all the uh, content that I have. Um, from the time that I've currently recorded, I will need to expand a bit more. Um, but if you have any questions, complaints, concerns, or suggestions, I am very much open to them. Um, very new to doing a presentation with PowerPoint at the same time. So that is also an increase in technology. Um, thank you.